Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how um, websites are use, use a combination of three technologies, HTML, uh, which really houses the content um, of a page, uh, CSS, which is cascading style sheets, and that is largely responsible for how the, the, the style of the page, the formatting, the colors, and then JavaScript, anything that's interactive on the page is likely there as a result of some JavaScript running. So to create a web page, your browser actually runs um, and um, takes the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and kind of combines it um, and, and produces the, the web page. So all you really need to do to create a web page with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is uh, your notepad on your computer and then a browser to, uh, to sort of test your work. So here we're going to go into Notepad in order to create our documents. So we'll run Notepad. And um, we're going to basically hook two pages to the HTML page. This will be our HTML page. So um, an HTML page largely has uh, an open HTML tag. The tag is um, enclosed in angle brackets. And at the very bottom, there'll be a forward slash HTML. And that closes the HTML tag. There are two other sets of tags. There's a head tag. Um, which is kind of like a header in a document and typically it shows things uh, actually the things that are in the head portion of the document typically are not seen in the actual web page and then we have a body uh, and a body close tag so these are typically the tags um, in an empty HTML so we wouldn't actually see anything here if we wanted to um, put a title um, at the top if you ever got a web page and you see the browser tab and it's got some verbiage in it let's call this my favorites and then we need a close title tag most html tags have an open and a close or some exceptions but this will put my favorites um, in the tab here and then we want to go ahead and put um, h1 uh, my top five favorite Things. We need to close our H1 tag. H1 is a heading level, and uh, there are six levels in HTML. Heading level one is at the highest, and it usually shows up on the screen, the largest, and it's oftentimes bold. Um, that can be kind of configured through the cascading style sheets. So we want to save this, but in order to get it to run in a, in a browser, uh, we need to save as and make sure that we, um, we, we don't use the .txt here. We want to save this. Um, let me create a new folder on my desktop. And we'll call this uh, web page demo. And then we'll go in here and we'll name our file uh, favorites. HTML. And you need either .htm or .html there in order for it, a web page in order to in order for it to open. Um, so now if we open up our file explorer and we go into our demo, our web page demo, there's our favorite. So notice that there's a Chrome icon here and that Chrome icon indicates that it's associated with the browser because we've named it with that HTML. So we go ahead and click on that. And this is what we see. And sometimes it's helpful to actually have, um, I'll go ahead and minimize this and we'll put this over here. Uh, it's helpful to have your web page over here as you type things. Um, let's add a few more elements here. You can see um, up here, let me close a few of these things. There we go. So you can see up here it says my favorites um, because of the title right here. And my top five favorite things are listed here. All right, let's make a list. So to make a list, there's two types of lists. There's a unordered list um, which is ul and that's bulleted um, and then you need to have each item inside your list uh, use the li tag which stands for list item so like say um, my family is one of my favorite favorite things here um, let's put another one in here uh, learning is one of my favorite things and uh, let's see traveling the world all right let's, that's probably sufficient let's let's make it my top three things three favorite things and then we'll we'll do something interactive for the fourth here 
All right, so if I save this, and you do have to save this if a notepad doesn't auto save. So now I've saved this, I can come over here. It doesn't have to change because I'm still have that other page loaded, the old version. So here I can refresh and you can see here, I've got a bulleted list. Now, because it's a top three favorite things, um, I could choose to make it an ordered list. And so if I went in and changed the UL tag to OL, that's an ordered list. And if we save that, you can see the change here and it is now numbered. All right, um, so that's that's how you create a, a basic vanilla HTML. Notice that the, the text over here, the font is just Times New Roman. It's black font on white background. Um, if we had a, um, a link, let's say we wanted to make a link, A is the uh, tag for that. Uh, typically we connect that to a H reference, which is the page. Let's say we want to send the user to Google, um, and we need to close the tag. Oops, I don't have my my close apostrophe here to close my href, so it was treating everything uh, as invisible. There we go. So you can see here I've already visited, it, so it's purple. It keeps track of those kinds of things, but normally it would be blue if I hadn't visited it. So and that's how you can create a, a link. But let's talk a little bit about. Um, styling here so let's say we want to style this page um, up here in the header we need to utilize some code in order to um, to link this to our css page and we still have to create our css page so in order so so in order to connect the css page we, we go up here inside head and we we actually need to use the uh, link uh, tag and um, here we use rel to tell it, what we are linking, which in our case is a style sheet, and we need to tell it where um, and what the, the file is. So we'll call our CSS page style.css. And in this case, there does not need to be a link close tag. It's um, That should suffice here. So let's go ahead and hit save. Now we haven't created a CSS page. So, uh, and this is where we would use, uh, see, we'd connect the CSS page to this HTML page, so it would go and get the rules. Now there are ways to put formatting and styling rules in a web page but typically we keep them separate so say you had 50 web pages and you all had a theme outlined in your style css page you could go in and change that one the css page that was linked to those 50 pages uh, and, and entirely do a makeover uh, of your your website um, for any style rules that you had inside this page um, if you had that 50 and 50 different pages, you'd have to go through each page separately uh, and make the changes in order to get the desired effect. So it's just much more efficient and it's kind of best practice in order to link your CSS uh, to an external file. So let's go create that. We're going to go to file new uh, and we're going to save as and we want to make sure we're in the same place as our HTML file um, and we're going to call it style.css and click save now the the syntax for css is a little different if we wanted to format our web page here let's go back over here to my top three favorite things and let's change um, the h1 heading so we can we can declare that we want to change h1 and then we use brackets uh, in order to put the rules here so let's say we want to change the color to blue and then we put an end bracer here if the only thing we wanted to do was to change the color of h1 we could save this now we come over and refresh the html it's going to pull this rule um, if we've connected everything up right and change the color of that font up there so as you can see it's now blue and we could do other things as well there's all sorts of rules um, font family is another attribute um, and it uses what's called a key uh, value pair. So on the left is kind of the key, the term, and on the right is like the value that you're giving it. So in this case, let's try Arial or Sans Serif and see if we can get the font style to change over here. So now you can see it is Arial, or if there's no Arial, then it will change to whatever the default Sans Serif is for the system that it's on. Um, if we wanna change the list item, fonts you know we can change li elements um, and let's say we uh, we also want the font family to be different than times new roman the default we can put that in here and maybe the color is green uh, we use a semicolon at the end of each in order to um, to let 
uh, CSS in the browser really is what's reading this know that we want, um, that we've got a new rule. So there's a rule here and the semicolon is kind of like the period at the end of a sentence. And so it lets it know there's going to be another rule here. So we have two rules that are applied to the LI or list item, which are each of these three things here. So if I hit file, save and refresh, you can see they've turned into Arial. Um, we can change the size of things as well. Um, so font size, 30 pixels. Let's we'll see if we can get that to change. So it got a little smaller actually, if we really wanted to make it obnoxiously big. We could go 90 pixels here, save. All right. And so you can see that there are a variety of rules that we can create. That's a little much. So we'll we'll go back to 40 pixels here. All right. Um, so that gives you a little taste of what uh, CSS is. So there's uh, dozens and dozens of, of, of different rules that you can set in CSS in order to change your um, your web page. In fact, let's uh, let's do one more. Let's do uh, the body of the web page is something that we can manipulate. And we should be able to set a background color, uh, maybe gold, something lighter so that the text shows through here. So let's file, save and refresh. All right, and it reduced our font size here as well. Okay, so uh, the last thing that we need to take a look at is the uh, JavaScript. JavaScript's responsible for making things interactive. So let's go back uh, to open uh, and find our web page here. And in this case, we want to open that in notebook because we want to edit it. All right, so we need uh, the text. There's another way to link um, the script up here. So we want uh, we want to link this to a script page. So we actually start this off with script, and we set up. Uh, actually, it's src uh, is the file, and we'll call it uh, we'll call it script.js. And we need to end the script file because you can put script on a page as well as link it to an external page. So we're just trying to link it to an external page here. All right, and we need to add a few other elements too. So let's go down here. Let's actually get rid of our Google. Well, we can push that down. So to push something down, you can put in um, a paragraph um, that's an empty paragraph or you could use BR, which is line break. And if you save this, and refresh this over here, you can see it pushed that down a little bit. So we can put something else in here. And we're gonna be putting in a button. So um, all you need to create a button is a button tag and it could be like, uh, let's put reveal So this is the text that'll appear on the button. And then we have a button close tag here. So let's save this and then refresh it. All right, and you've got a button. Notice uh, that the anchor doesn't automatically have a line feed here. So in order to push it down one, we can stick a BR line break in there in order to make it look a little bit better. All right, and we actually are gonna want something revealed. Um, and so um, let's do that. Let's put um, a paragraph in here, but we're gonna um, name this. So we're gonna give it an ID so that we can refer to it in our JavaScript. And so we're gonna call it hidden message. And this will be coding is one of my favorite things here. So we'll put coding in as the secret. You can put whatever secret you want in here. Um, but we do want to set the style of this so that it doesn't show. We want to make sure that the display none should make it so that this is Actually, let's 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 put display block in there so we can see it the first time. So let's hit save and refresh, and you can see coding is right here. Now let's change block, and it looks like we actually forgot the end quote here. But let's put uh, none in here and save this. And 
Okay, so I have made an, a couple of errors. That's why it is was not working here. So hidden message needed an end quote. Style quote display colon none should now work. We'll go ahead and throw a semicolon in there because it's a CSS rule that we're basically putting in there. Uh, let's save this. And then when we re refresh this, you can see it's gone now. So um, if we put in block, save this. This is kind of the after that we're looking for. This should pop up. But for now, we want it to be set as none. In other words, hidden. And all right, and we're going to add an on click. Um, so um, there's a command called on click, and you can name a function. Um, let's call it um, let's call it reveal message reveal. And typically use camel case. There's a little uh, open close parenthesis uh, after that in order to let JavaScript know that that's a function. So we need to go and create that function reveal message in our JavaScript. So let's go open up. And we're going to look for all files here. And we don't have it yet, so we need to create one. So let us create one file new file, save as. Uh, it's going to be in a web page folder, but we want to name it script.js. JS is for JavaScript. And then here we want to we want our function. It has to be called function reveal message. All right, and then we use bracers to put our code in here. And so we need to, uh, the document is the name of the web page, all objects. So all web pages are, are of the object type document. So we can say document get element by ID is a way to go and grab something based on what you've ID'd it as. And we, we made our hidden paragraph, hidden message. So it's going to go grab that. And then um, we need to tell it we want to, to adjust the style, the, the display, and we want to set it to block. So if we click on our button, it should call this function. And then this function should um, switch the display.none to display dot block. Let me check my syntax here. So I believe I need this to say equal after display and put this in quotation marks. All right, so that should programmatically change that hidden message to block, which is the block format like block paragraph. So it should show up on the screen. So all right, let's hit save here. Uh, let's uh, refresh this page, and if we hit reveal a secret favorite, it pops up on the page, and that's what we want. So now we've got our an example of our interactivity. It's our JavaScript um, where we clicked a button and we had it. We can we can honestly have JavaScript do a lot more than that. Um, for instance, if you wanted to, you can do window alert. Um, So now when we uh, hit the button, it'll do a couple of different things, right? So we can refresh the page. Notice coding goes away. And we can hit reveal a secret. And there's an alert box that pops up. And then when we click OK, it runs the other. It changes that display to coding. So there's a lot of things that you can do. So this is a good example of interactivity. That's what JavaScript is largely responsible for. And if we go back to our CSS page, you can see some of the rules that you can set in terms of color and formatting and spacing and a variety of things are available. And then finally, um, the core content of the page is contained in HTML. And that's largely how um, web pages are sort of script and CSS and HTML all sort of threaded together. So um, hopefully you got uh, um, a better understanding of how those three things can work together in order to create um, web pages, or if they're very interactive, they might actually be web applications. Um, pretty much the sky's the limit with, uh, with those three um, technologies. So thanks for your time and attention in this video. I'll see you in the next video.